these logistical things here and um, ask you to take your Bibles and open to uh, Galatians chapter 5. We are in the midst of the series that we're calling Free. And you can see you don't look very free if you got these things on, right? The handcuffs. And so we're, uh, we're talking about how God has designed that handcuffs become loosened, right? And uh, you can become free and, uh, and experience all the freedom that God has for you. So uh, that's, uh, that's been pretty exciting. So we're in the sixth of this series, and it's probably one or two more. We have um, Worship at Wellington, as we mentioned next week. We uh, will break away from the free series and then come back at the end of the month. But um, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's been freeing <laughs> in a lot of ways looking through these things. Let me just mention that, uh, that we're grateful that um, Jacob and his uh, new bride, how many months has it been now? It'll be a year. A month. year? Mm-hmm. Month. Isn't that exciting? So, fantastic. And uh, the kiddos are happy. I just walked in on them up there, so that's exciting. And, uh, and then my uh, real good friend from over in Acton, Maine, where I lived for seven years, is uh, is right there, Lowry Robertson and his uh, and his wife, and that's the big group of kids. That uh, how many you got? Four. Four. So that's uh, that's exciting. So my son's just moved out to Colorado. Lowry and his family just moved back from Colorado. Right? <laughs> he finished up at Denver Seminary. Yeah, that's exciting. So um, I'm glad you're here today because I'm going to tap into you and have you come preach some Sunday. Sound good? Yeah, that's exciting. Okay. Well, it's awesome to see what God is doing and, and the, the work that He's that He's um, not only beginning but continuing um, in our community here. Uh, one of the great um, elements of living Jesus in our in our uh, workplace, you know, neighborhoods, and uh, it's just to, to shine. So so we believe that Jesus loves Bristol, and uh, and he wants to shine the light of Jesus Christ in this community. And one of the ways we do it, of course, is worship at Wellington. So, uh, and uh, the other way is the old home day. And uh, so we have some uh, some giveaways we're going to we're going to provide. We have face painting. We got some clowning around this this year, uh, Evelyn. Do you know? Or? Yeah, we got clowning around going on, and uh, but but the thing that's really exciting is that people ask questions, and they ask about Jesus, and we have real opportunities to uh, to just um, shine Christ's light here in town. So and then there's a lot of visitors that come in as well. So um, be part of that, and uh, and uh, just just become excited to see what God's going to do. All right, so let's uh, let me just mention one more thing on the back of your worship folders is the uh, the notes of uh, the things that will be flashed on the screen, provided I can get them up there. I just have to have this mouse in a uh, Windows 8. That's what it is. So, so we can move ahead there. It goes okay. So now we're looking at the first element of what we're calling the freedom factor. We've uh, talked about the faith factor, the truth factor. And, uh, and we talked about the sin factor and all these different elements that, uh, that Paul is expressing here to us in this uh, great chapter concerning freedom, which starts with, for freedom, Christ has set us free in verse 1. But, uh, but, but we see now uh, before us, verses 13 through 15, in the facet that we're calling the freedom factor. And there's going to be a second element of it in the last part of this uh, series we'll talk about in a couple weeks. But I'm, I'm giving you the verse up here. I've underlined some elements that are going to be the things that we're going to really emphasize today. And so let me just read this for you as I uh, give you opportunity to, to begin thinking about what, uh, what Paul is expressing to us as... Uh, God's people and as those seeking the Lord God. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. 
but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour one another, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Now, as many of you know, this past week was a week filled with news. Lots of news. Lots of um, sad situations that have taken place. There has been suicide and more bondage that we've heard about and slave to addictions and it's just ongoing all around us in our world and it's absolutely obvious that people are handcuffed people are not free and there's only one way that God fights bondage and that's through his son Jesus Christ and so Paul is bringing that out once again that we understand that freedom is available and it's there and it's important that we understand from his perspective and we're going to talk more about that in just a minute but there are so many crying out for freedom and they still fight bondage today we're going to look at this in the freedom factor but I want to ask what does it mean to be free? What does it mean to be free? And so there's a couple of things that I'm giving you space there to kind of write down some of these things. Just as light is the absence of darkness, freedom is the absence of bondage. To be free is to be no longer encumbered with handcuffs. Freedom is the absence of being burdened or hindered or hampered, impeded, laden, weighed down, yoked, in what we call handicapped and handcuffed. When free, all these elements are gone. And Paul even says that our focus in our focus text this morning, brothers and sisters, you were called to be free. Do you understand that? You and I were called to be free. We are going to be in a world of darkness and sin. We are going to be in life situations that want to handcuff you, but Jesus came to set you free. To set you free. Now, those things may not go away, but you're free nonetheless. And God can bring things into your life, even though the bondage is all around you, that can make you free and help you enjoy that. So God's blue, blue, blueprint, there's the word, for Christ's followers is freedom. And, and let me qualify this for you because Paul here in Galatians 5, Jesus says, we mentioned in John 8, where it says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Speak of freedom, but it's in terms of heavenly thinking. Heavenly thinking. You, you may not come out of bondage situations, but you don't need to be bound in them. Because Jesus has come to set you free. So freedom, understand, is not license. Let's understand this from God's perspective. Freedom is not license. The misuse of your freedom leads to a return to being burdened and re-handcuffed. Freedom is responsibility. So in John 15, we read of something very, very intriguing. Jesus' words are here. He says in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. And such branches are picked up and thrown into a fire and burned. If you remain in me, my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to, to glorify my Father, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So this assessment by Jesus here in John 15 is the picture of true freedom. Freedom is equated with fruit-bearing in other words, being alive, 
fruitful. If you really want to know what the fruit is, you read on later on in chapter uh, 5. As all those kids that were up here, remember we had the bales of hay and we had funny looking Ella sitting in the back there for a couple of Sundays. And, uh, and the kids learned about the fruit of the Spirit. That's being fruitful. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, patience, and so forth. Bondage, though, is equated with the burning of dead branches. And bondage, in that case, is death. So freedom is life. Bondage is death. And that's what it's all about. So to be free is the absence of bondage. To be free is bearing fruit, even in the midst of a world that's still handcuffed. So there is a better way. My friends, there is a better way, and it's in Jesus Christ. So here's the call of freedom. It is the true picture of freedom, about bearing fruit, burning of dead limbs. But there's a call of freedom, and there's the, the what, and the why, and the discovery concerning freedom. These three components. So let's ask. What, what, let's ask about the what of freedom. You've been called to be free. Verse 13. And what is this? This is salvation. Salvation. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Receiving Christ as our Savior. True freedom is the forgiveness of sins. The redemption of your soul. You come in as a sinner. You come out forgiven and cleansed. So the what of freedom is salvation. You've been set free from the sin bonds. You've been set free from the self bonds. You've been set free from the religious bonds. You've been set free from falseness to re uh, receiving truth. That is salvation. And that's the call. You've been called to be free. The better way is in Christ. The one who has come to set us free. He died. He rose again. He's alive. He's giving life. The next aspect is the why of freedom. Because you've been called to be free and the why is, is the display of no longer being handcuffed. You ever see anybody baptized? Recently we've had some baptisms. Uh, sometimes at the beach, right? Diana, over there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Across from the Big Catch. Yeah. You became the Big Catch that day. <laughs> Wayne, you were over there too, right? Yeah. yeah. And we had some others down at Wellington. We are hoping that Terry is going to feel well enough that we can do the baptism next week and, uh, and so forth. You, you see people when they go down the water and they come up, right? A lot of times they go, woohoo! You, you see that? You notice that? They're just, there's excitement. They're not doing that because they're cold and wet, you know, trying to shake off like a dog. They're doing it because they're excited. They're free. The picture of freedom in Christ. No longer, the display of no longer being handcuffed. Whereas handcuffs display bondage, a living, lively relationship with Jesus Christ displays freedom. That's what it's all about. And then finally, the discovery. The discovery element of freedom. You are called. What, what, what a, you know, it's like eyes are open. <laughs> you see clearly. It's like the smoke is gone and you can see the discovery is a transfer. It's a transfer from self to Savior, from sin to salvation, from suffering to satisfaction. That's the whole element of being called to be free. The better way is life with Jesus. If you feel handcuffed, if you feel in your life that you're stuck, if you like stuck in the mud, if you feel that there is no way out, give Jesus a try. 
Christ makes all things new. And we have people here that can testify to that. They've seen that. They know that. Following Him is freedom. Surrender to Him is liberty. So the freedom factor tells us that we're called to be free. And so when you are free, some very amazing things happen. And so we're going to tell you about two of those today. Right from this words here that Paul has given to us in verses 13 down to 15. Actually 13 to 14. And then we'll just make a, a comment about verse 15. But the first element of the freedom, freedom factor is service. Service. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. So he says what? Serve one another. Serve one another. So you say, well, wait a minute. I've been set free, but now I'm going to be a servant? Remember, we're, we're thinking from God's perspective. This is from the heavenly. And, and the real freedom comes when we follow Christ fully, even to the point of doing what he says, serving others. And so, um, it's coming up, here it comes. To serve, and that's being connected with Jesus. Connected with Jesus. You were called to be free, now serve one another. The freedom comes when you connect it with Jesus, because Christ is freedom. He offers freedom because he broke free from death, and then he asks us to break free from self and serve one another. Jesus asks you to serve because he himself served, right? Remember the picture where Jesus came and washed the disciples? I mean, they should have been washing his feet as the Lord, but he got down and he washed their feet. Because he was a servant, we serve. If you abide in Christ your vine, you will serve. You will bear fruit. And serving is not bondage, beloved, but spiritual freedom. Spiritual freedom. And not only being connected, this aspect of serving, but being connected with others. And this is so vital we understand this. You know, when... when Jesus came to this earth to offer salvation. Isn't it interesting when you said yes to Christ that you didn't go to heaven? Because for years, the church taught, you know, you were saved to go to heaven. You were saved, yeah, to go to heaven eventually, but to serve here and now. To have Jesus live through you. To, to make you shine like He shines here in the world of darkness. And so this whole aspect of one another is so important. When it mentions one another in this verse 13, who are these people? Well, you go back to the first part of the verse, and it says, my brothers and sisters. This is God's family. And in family, we defend one another. We encourage one another. We adore one another. We edify, build up family. We seek serve, share, stand with God's family. It's a relationship like no other. With God as your Heavenly Father, Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit living in you, moving through you. So understand, when we serve one another, God's family grows and thrives together. Together. And then, the final aspect is that we're connected with righteousness. Righteousness. Do not use your freedom, it says here, to indulge the flesh. Unrighteousness is self-seeking and self-serving. Righteousness, on the other hand, which simply means doing the right thing, is serving. Seeking out others' needs and coming alongside. So there's those three elements of what this verse is telling us concerning being free. Serve. Connect to Jesus. Connect with others.
connect with righteousness because to serve others is to live like Jesus and that's freedom to serve others is to live like Jesus and that's freedom so freedom factor number one if you don't write anything else down write this down serve serve okay the next freedom factor freedom factor number two is to love and we see this in the latter part of verse 13 going to verse 14 and then verse 15 comes in here at the end and I'll just kind of make a passing word about that so it tells us to be serving humbly in what love in love not only do you serve but you love you serve Christ you love him our motto here is to love God love others make disciples right and so this this is this is all about life in Christ for people talk about the Christian life that word Christian is tossed around so much that's why a lot of times we use the term Christ followers instead but the whole aspect of life in Christ is love humbly in love verse 14 for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command love your neighbor as yourself love your neighbor as yourself and then he qualifies verse 15 if you fight and devour one another watch out or you'll be destroyed by one another so there are a couple of elements I just want to bring up bring to your attention here what, what he mentions this whole aspect of love is a first of all humble love humble love and um, following Christ because he was humble he humbled himself as God and became man right he humbled himself even as man to become a slave or a servant and then he humbled himself because you think even a servant has a right to live he humbled himself to die and he didn't die for anything he did, but he took our sins on him. And, uh, but see, that's the humble love aspect. The humble love aspect. So what happened? He wonderfully died on the cross and broke from the grave free. His humility ultimately exalted him. Isn't that great? And you know, you know what, folks? That's free. It's free. To become humble is free. Jesus experienced it. Paul experienced it. Some of you have experienced it. It's free. It's free. So he says, serve humbly in love. And Jesus knew what he was talking about because he did <coughs> that very thing. And that's why it's a Christ-like love. A Christ-like love. Not only a humble one, but a Christ-like love. Jesus did this for us. And that's why it says, you keep with this commandment. You love your neighbor as yourself. It's pretty interesting when you think about it. Because what Jesus is saying and what he's doing is that he's reiterating the command that he gave way back in Matthew 22. Right? Love God. Love others. Well, how do you love others? As yourself. Right? Well, you know, that guy over there isn't that lovely. So I think I'll step on his flowers. Well, come on. <laughs> Would you want that done to yourself? Would you do that to yourself? That's what is being expressed in this command. That Paul is reiterating here that Jesus stated years ago. Christ like love. Christ like love. And Jesus showed that kind of love. Pretty exciting. Pretty uh, pretty amazing. What do you think? So when you look at this now, this aspect of uh, of love, we see the opposite of freedom. 
Because when we even take away a smidgen of love, destruction occurs. That's where verse 15 comes in. If you bite and devour one another, watch out, or you'll be destroyed by each other. You know, you know what I thought of when I heard when I read this? You know, because I'm thinking, you know, biting and devouring one another. And, and I know it's talking about, you know, in, in the spiritual sense, and it's even talking about, you know, like barking at someone and disliking someone and all that. But when I thought of the bite, I thought of the big fight back in 1997, remember that? With Evander Holyfield and Michael Tyson. Remember Tyson bit the guy's ear off? Remember that? <laughs> that was pretty gross. <laughs> that, that was the physical aspect of it. The spiritual aspect is, it's just as gross. You ever think of that? In God's sight, it's just as bad as what Tyson did to Holyfield. That Christ followers do that to one another. And what's going to happen? Destruction. And what's destruction? Darkness. And what is that? It's being handcuffed. That is not freedom. And that's why Paul mentions this. If you bite and devour, watch out. It's a warning, beloved. It's a warning. Because when you become self-focused, that's what comes in. The opposite of freedom is destruction. It's destruction. This, um, this past week I had uh, the opportunity to, uh, to hear a song that Kathy mentioned to me a few weeks ago. She says, you, you got to hear this. And so we can uh, put YouTube on the, on the little tablet and we can run it through the TV, you know, through the little chrome thing that they have in the back. And so, uh, so we watched this video by a uh, band called for God and Country. And it's interesting, Archie, you said you like that song. It was Rebecca St. James wrote that quite a few years ago. And her two younger brothers are the ones on this video here that we're going to show. Um, they're the Small Bone Brothers. I don't know why they have the Small Bone name, but they do. And, uh, and I've seen them lead worship down in uh, Tennessee at the People's Church down there. But, uh, but I want you to watch these words. Now this is a kind of a, this kind of a uh, pretty you know, tapping song, foot tapping song. So. Uh, um, it may wrench against some of the the aged of us, but um, it's called Fix My Eyes. So watch this. Watch this.
there you go. Right? That's what it is. And um, just like you take an evaluation like they mentioned right there, you know, this is what I would do differently. You know, I look at my life. What does it yield? What can happen now? When Jesus takes over, you know, you live like you're not scared. You love. You, f you speak freedom. <laughs> you Amazing. Right? 